Hi, I'm Barb and I'm Alex and we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making KDA All Out Akali from the League of Legends in collaboration with Elisa from Moonlight Jewel. We want to try something different in this video, not only shrinking but also reshaping the head. Our main victim is Blondie Locks, but as backup we're going to use Apple White, both from Ever After High. In this line the dolls have huge heads, which don't always suit the project, especially if the character we're making is real or semi-real. They both received a basic treatment of removing hair and makeup, and now it's time for some chemical processes. I'm dunking both heads in 70% acetone and 30% water mixture, and leaving them them for two days. In the meantime, let's make some body modifications. She will have her back exposed, so I'm sending down the factory marks. I don't know what's with those Ever After High dolls, but this is the third doll in a row with a broken neck in the same place. Luckily, the mechanism is working and it's an easy fix with a super glue. Every KDA member is wearing some sort of high heels, which will be easy to do on the doll, except for Akali. I'm using a Dremel tool to cut her legs in the ankles and right next to the toes. Then I'm reattaching her feet in different positions using two-part epoxy glue and twisted wire. I'm not going for completely flat feet, because I feel like they would be huge compared to the regular dolls. Epoxy sculpt will help me make the feet look like actual feet again. After it's cured, I'm trying to roughly match the color of the clay to the skin. It will probably be covered by pants or socks, but I'm not going to risk it peeking through. Two days have passed quickly and the heads are ready. I'm always amazed how squishy and soft they are after taking them out of the jar. I left them to rest for one day and then placed both heads in the 3D printed V to reshape them. After all the acetone evaporates, the head should remain in the new shape. For Akali's jacket, I'm using a pattern by Requiem Art Design. To make the sleeves a little bit poofier, I'm spreading the pattern like so. I also shortened the whole body to match Akali's design. I'll be making it out of this very shiny silver fabric. I'm cutting out everything using my new matte and rotary braid combo from Arteza. I wanted to press on some vinyl on the sleeves to match the detail on Akali's sleeve, so I made some sketches on the sleeve pattern piece and then fixed it up on the computer to print out the templates. I'll be cutting it by hand since I don't have a Cricut machine. Yet. I'm tracing the lines with my knife on the left side of the vinyl. Next, I weed out the pieces that I don't want to end up on the jacket. I can now align it with the sleeve piece and press. I also cut out the tiger that goes on the back of the jacket. I added a detail out of a blue glitter vinyl to layer on top of the black piece. I ironed it under a piece of cotton to make sure nothing sticks to my iron. I'm also adding interfacing to the collar and using pins to make sure it irons where I want it to. I ended up interfacing the whole thing as the fabric is very stretchy. I'm gonna start by putting together the center back seam. I do a straight stitch down the seam, press it open and top stitch each half down to add detail. Now we can press the tiger in place and add the shiny, glittery vinyl on top. I hemmed the sleeves with a black thread and since I make the sleeve seam longer, I'm putting in a gathering stitch along the top curve. I tie one end together and pull on the bobbin thread on the other. Pinning the sleeve in place and making sure the gathers are spread out evenly. Mm -hmm. 
I like to sew my sleeves with the bodice side up and stop every now and then to lift up the foot and reposition the bodice to avoid any wrinkles. I added the other sleeve and top stitched the seam allowance towards the bodice to keep it in place and add detail. I'm hemming the collar by first gluing the allowance down with fabric glue and eventually super glue too. Then I top stitched it down to make sure it stays in place. Next, I'm adding the collar to the bodice with both of them facing up and to finish up the sandwich, I'm laying the facing right sides down on that. This will make sure that there's no visible seams in the front. Then you can turn the facing to the inside of the jacket and top stitch it down. Looking good so far. Next step is closing the sleeves and side seams. After that, I realized that my jacket was a bit too long, so I decided to trim it and I'm marking the trim line with a removable pen. I decided that I didn't like how the jacket fit and how the tiger was so low, so I made another version a little bit smaller than the first one and the tiger way higher than the first attempt. I also added some decorative stitches on the sleeves of the new version. Next, I will be making her trousers. I'm pressing some double-sided fusible webbing to a piece of iridescent vinyl. I cut out the spiky shapes and now can press them on the pant pieces. I'm bending them a little while warm, so they can curl better to the leg shape. Next is just putting the pants together. First the front raise, hemming the cuffs and hemming the waist. Then you can sew the back, but not all the way to the top, so the trousers can be put on over the butt. Lastly, the inner leg seam. Make sure to match up the previous seams and the bottoms of the legs. After turning these out and fitting, I decided to quickly flip them back over to take in the longer leg a little bit. I added a snap in the back, a fake fly stitch and some tiny belt loops. Using the same vinyl, I made a quick decorative belt. The heads are still shrinking, so I'm going to take care of the clothes. We decided that the best way to make her top will be to sculpt it directly on the doll. First I tried making the top part with this fabric, but the scale of the mesh was not great for this doll. I found the fabric that Barb used on our Dark Bloom doll and it has way smaller holes in it. It turned out to be a bit dark, but I think it looks much better than the previous one. For the solid part I'm going to use epoxy sculpt. I'm just placing blobs of clay on the doll and smudging it with a silicone tool and my finger. I let it dry for a few hours and then carved a few lines with an X-Acto knife. After a bit of sanding, I'm painting the top. I'm trying to imitate the iridescent effect with paint by making a fade using mint, light blue, sapphire blue and purple. The next step will be to add glossiness to the top, but first I need to make the body look less like plastic and more like a living creature. I'm focusing on the belly, arms and cleavage. To add shine to the sculpted top, I'm covering it with a shiny top coat for nail art. It's cured after 60 seconds in a UV lamp. Then I'm rubbing in mica powders from Arteza, green one for the front and blue and purple for the sides. After another layer of top coat, it looks like this. 
Then I just added small straps of craft foam around the edges of the mesh part. Now onto my favorite part, painting very small things. I didn't record most of the process, because when I'm painting such detailed pieces, I'm using my secret technique of painting with my nose, and nothing is visible in the camera. As a reference, I'm using 3D models turnarounds from League of Legends, and first I painted the sleeves using this picture, but then I found out that the models in Wild Rift game are way more detailed and I switched to using this as a guide. Every painted piece is always sealed with a matte or gloss acrylic varnish, and the tiger painting is no exception. To make fake pocket zippers on the jacket, I'm using 3D fabric paint. I prefer to use them in a handmade cone, because it's a similar technique to doing henna, but I was too lazy to put a proper color into the cone, so I'm making them with pink paint. Then of course I'm painting it over with black and silver. Akali has some weapons, and I swear I printed these like a million times before I got any passable prints, because these are so small. They still are not perfect, but I can fix those with some epoxy sculpt. I also 3D printed a helmet for her, and I tried recording putting the magnets in, but it was early in the morning, and I didn't notice that Alex took the SD card out of the camera to do some editing, so you're gonna have to believe me that I drilled the holes and glued the magnets in. One side of the helmet wasn't deep enough for the magnets, so I glued on a piece of thin magnetic metal so the two halves can come together. Akali needs socks, so using a thin stretchy black fabric I made some under the knee length socks. I used my favorite elastic trick to hem the tops of the socks. Simply zigzag the elastic to the wrong side of the fabric close to the edge, and then turn the elastic over and zigzag again. Then fold the sock in half and stitch. After turning them out I realized the elastic won't go under the longer leg of the trousers, so I simply cut it off, as the fabric won't fray. Now I'm going to drape a shoe on a piece of cotton. I wrap it tightly on the leg and draw using a reference on my phone of how I think the shoe should look like. I added way too much detail. Next I'm using a tracing wheel to transfer my markings onto paper. I don't think you can see them, but there's tiny holes in the paper and I'm simply connecting them. I add some allowance and mark out the separate pieces I need to cut. I was definitely overachieving at this point with the amount of pieces. I copied my pattern a couple of times and now I'm tracing the base layer and some of the top layers onto thin craft foam. I can now stack them together using hot glue. I'll make the shoes directly on the socks. Using a candle, I'm softening the foam and forming it around the leg. Then I can tack it down with the hot glue. It's time to figure out how to make the soles of her crystal-like shoes. This was quite a challenge for me. I think I'm definitely better at painting than sculpting. The clay didn't want to stick to the fabric, so I made a base of the platform from cardboard and hot glue. I prefer to work in layers, so the first batch of epoxy went for the simple shapes. After that's cured, I'm adding the geometric shapes, kinda looking like studs. Digital Akali has her feet and shoes flat, but since I made a little heel for our version, the soles have to be different from the original. I'm just shaping them one by one and then painting them blue and purple, trying to enhance the 3D look with shadows and highlights. Shortcuts are not always the quickest options. I tried to thin the blade of the kunai with a knife instead of sandpaper and...
I had to redo the tip and wait for a couple of hours for the epoxy to stiffen. After sanding and priming, I can start painting the weapons. I believe it's pretty self-explanatory. I have a reference picture and try to transfer the design and colors onto the print. I don't have a light mint acrylic and it's a difficult color to mix from other paints, so to paint the blade I'm using watercolors. After I'm done with watercolors, I sprayed it with MSC so the paint won't mix with the color on top. Some artificial shadows and highlights here and there, the blue crystal on the kunai, and these are done. Let's finally move on to the head. On the right side we have Apple's head which was 48 hours in diluted acetone. On the left it's Blondie's head which went through the same treatment and had an extra bath in pure acetone for 2 hours. Unfortunately the double soaked Blondie was still too white for the helmet so we decided to grab a third doll, Vandala de Bluns, and try her head instead. I really like her sculpt and I think she will be great for a semi-real character. We actually considered her from the beginning, but recoloring the skin is always a bit tricky and matching the color to the Ever After High Body was not my biggest dream for this project. She also needs to be smaller, so into the acetone she goes. The new head is a bit taller than Blondie, but also much slimmer, which is the desired feature here. For some reason there is a big crater in her head, and I think the jaw is not symmetrical anymore, but I'm not going to shrink any more heads in this video. I plan to make a magnetic ponytail, so she has to have one of the magnets inside her head. I trimmed the head cap a little bit, so the head is even smaller. I'm going to reattach the pieces with the wire while playing Pokemon Go and catching Magmar. To secure the pieces, I'm using hot glue and epoxy sculpt. For her hair, I'm going to use acrylic yarn. It's the best way to make her spiky ponytail. I'm preparing the wefts mozaquito style. I linked the tutorial in the description. This purple was a bit too light, so I dyed it with green alcohol ink to neutralize the color and its brightness. For the blonde part, I'm going to use something different. I don't remember if this is viscose or silk or some other kind of yarn, but it's very fluffy and soft. I'm just pulling a piece, cutting it and then gluing like regular wefts. We also have leftover pink yarn from making Tecna Custom years ago. I think we also used it on Aurelion Sol and there's still a bunch of it left. I'll start with the ponytail. I'm gluing the wefts on the piece of yarn, reinforced with the wire. And this is how it looks after some trimming. I'm going to try to recolor the face, but I'm pretty sure that it will be a bit darker than her body. After three layers of pastels, the color looks solid enough to start the face up. When I'm not sure where to place the eyes, I start with brows. Vandala has very big and defined eye sockets, but Akali's eyes are a lot smaller, so it will probably look like she has eye bags, but we can work with this. I'm starting with watercolor pencils and work in layers. I actually don't like painting shrunken heads because the final is a lot harder and pencils have crazy coverage on it. I would say it's even better than on paper. I was able to build the black eyeliner on the first layer on the top of the sketch. In this case is enhanced by recolored skin and a lot of layers of MSC. It makes work a bit faster, but there's no room for mistakes or subtle details. I was actually surprised that Akali has blue eyes. I was sure they would be dark brown or black. I kind of failed at making her look Korean. I need to study different eye shapes to be able to do that, but I think the molded eyes didn't help at all. I couldn't stop myself from adding a bit of freckles. This sculpt has very voluminous lips, which is perfect for faking the open mouth smile with acrylic paint. 
I added some details of camera and also reworked her lower lashes for more graphic style. As a last detail, I'm painting catch lights and giving the dolls three layers of Perlex powder. I considered making a wig, but at the end decided to glue the yarn directly to the head. I prefer to use white glue for this, but I know they won't work on this Frankenstein head because it doesn't really stick to hot glue and clay. I always check if the weft flips nicely and create a good looking hairline. My first plan was that the hair from around the head will make an addition to the ponytail, just like Riku's hair, but the hair didn't fit in the helmet. I decided to cheat a little and glue the hair to the scalp and cut it short. I left only the side parts, so they cover all the glue and blend into the ponytail nicely. It's not my finest hairstyle ever, but it will do. Placing the head on the body was a terrible experience. Even after cutting the neck back and hitting the head with a hair dryer, it was quite a challenge. Their colored skin cracked in a few places and the hair glue melted in some spots, but I managed to fix it. I didn't record it though. The last accessory is her tiger helmet. I made the hole for the ponytail bigger with a Dremel tool. Then covered the whole thing in dark blue paint. For the darker parts, I'm using a mix of black, blue and purple because pure black was too brown to fit this project. Using a reference picture, I'm painting the decoration with a few layers of white paint. I'm sketching the tiger face with a white watercolor pencil to make sure everything is where it should be. Then I made all the yellow and orange parts and finish it with mint paint. This is how she turned out. We love League of Legends characters, their designs are always so good. And we love KDA, loved it since the first song came out, so we're so glad Elisa reached out to make this KDA collaboration happen. I'm sure all of you know her, but in case you don't, make sure to go to the Moonlight Jewel channel and check out her KDA Seraphine doll custom. Do you have any favorite KDA or League of Legends characters in general? My favorite KDA member is Evelyn, and outside of KDA it's Aurelion Sol. My favorite KDA member is Akali, and my all-time favorite first ever purchased in-game champion is Vi, although I realized I wasn't too good in the jungle and switched to playing support later. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day, and we'll see you next time. Bye! And now, for a dramatic reading of K slash DA more. K. D. A. Should we show him how we do it every day? Na. Na na na. Na 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 na. Let's get him. Akali that girl. Kali go girl. Kali don't stop. Kali. Don't scur.